Right, let's introduce Project Lincoln Green. Because it's Lincoln Green. Um, it's a 1975, I think it's a D suffix. suffix shiny engine um, it's had a fair amount of work done um, but wasn't completed so gearbox has been refurbed but then leaked all the oil out uh, engine's been rebuilt um, with 10 bolt cylinder heads um, and nicely built together really nice um, but body's tatty I'm not worried about that at the moment uh, I'm gonna go over the mechanicals on this thing so the uh, key objective for me I've agreed with the customer is to go over each of the axles, prop shaft, gearbox, transfer box, uh, brakes, get the engine up and running, um, and then we'll discuss next steps. Um, it looks like it's hanging, but it's actually quite a solid body frame on this thing. Um, it's got challenges, <coughs> I'll be honest. Um, it's had new sills put on it at some point. Uh, it's not the end of the world. The loom is just a fucking disaster zone. Got overdrive in it. It's all there. I mean, interesting features like, you know. <laughs> I don't, don't need to say anything at all. Um, yeah, but on the whole, it's actually not that bad. Doors are gopied. Um, we might be able to find a better pair of doors than that. But I'm not onto bodywork on this. I really am only onto mechanicals. Uh, that looks like some sort of vacuum pipe there. God knows what that's off. Yes, <coughs> sort that out in a minute. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get it up onto the stands, get the wheels off, and start working on the corners. Keep that underneath. Front first, I think, because it's in this way round. Engine needs to come out to sort the gearbox out. So the new chassis, I believe. Um, but yeah, it is what it is, and it ain't what it ain't. Right, okay, so we've got the front end up in the air. Now, uh, the customer did warn me that this thing had been kind of thrown together, and he's really not wrong. Um, so what I'm gonna have to do here, I think, because I just don't, I'll have to go through and check everything. I mean, you can see the thing is in a state of incompleteness. The steering arms were attached. Um, brake lines you can see up there yeah you have to do something about those there's no way of connecting up to the caliper at the moment calipers look refurbed I'll take those off put them in a box somewhere carefully uh, springs are missing off the pins so you've got a mixture of old and new here which is weird because I thought that the 3.9 calipers had springs in between and not these clips <clears throat> so that is weird um, Luckily the pads aren't sitting on the surface of the disc, which is why it's been rolled backwards and forwards and you can see there's very clearly thumbprints all over the place. So I'm going to strip the uh, front hub down um, and see what's going on. We've got bolts missing on the flange where it goes onto the axle casing. Um, bolts that hold the bottom swivel pin are loose. Uh, what else have we got that I found? Oh, there's been a few bits of bolts. Wheel nuts on this thing. I don't know what they are. <coughs> they were mercilessly tight. And you can see they've all started to strip on the inside here. All of them. Now, the actual studs themselves appear to be okay. But that, to my mind, that doesn't even seem like it's the right bloody nut. Maybe I'm not the right bloody nut. I don't know. I'm back to front. No? So it's on a good bit of the thread unless the studs are damaged because the wrong nuts have been put on. Uh, but these things were, I mean, they took a four foot breaker bar to get them moving. And then I wore my bloody battery out on the impact wrench, getting the rest of it off. All 10 of them, <coughs> sorry, nine of them, because there's one missing. The steering arm, let's get down here. Steering box, not that much play on it. I don't know if you can see that because my, I'm wobbling at the same time as I'm wobbling it. That's all play. So again, I don't quite know what's going on with the steering box. Is it actually in the damper arm? No, drop arm appears to be tight, but again, it's gonna to have to kind of come off, I think. No, it is the drop arm, look. It's the drop arm's not tight. 
I can move it up and down as well. well that's an easy fix. Take that off with some dynamite. Um, front props off. None of the correct bolts were used on it. Um, it's it's tired anyway. I don't know why you bother putting it back on um, if it was tired. Uh, that's the fuel line, by the way, a fuel return line. I found a while it whacking me in the face. Uh, both steering arms. Yeah, I've seen better days, haven't they? Right, stop grumbling, Richard. Get on with it. Uh, the exhaust, there is an exhaust system on this thing, by the way, but very good. Mind, we've got a nicely tuned engine. It's the smallest diameter exhaust I've ever seen on a Rover V8. Um, so I suspect that that will change. The customer did say he wanted a 3.9 stainless system. Now, this could be a 3.9 in here. I need to look at the engine number on it in a second and then find out what the engine actually is. Yeah, sorry, John, this whole thing's going to have to come apart. Um, it's all kind of, it has been thrown together. There's all manner of grit and crap going on in here. Um, all of the bolts are fiendishly tight because they've just been put in bone dry. Um, got the state of the stub axle in here. I'm going to have to, that'll have to come off, check the CV joint, check the stub axle, check the swivel preload, put it back together again. Um, I'm afraid. There's no point me, because I kind of wanted to check the swivel preload before I went too far on this. But, um, as far as I can see, there's, there's, there's been no oil in this thing. Um, but, on the drive plate um, no gaskets bearing needs bearing might be salvageable but chances are by the time we've gone this far we might as well put in new Timken bearings yes or no I think as the case may be right um, also these bloody caliper bolts they are fiendishly tight I'm not I'm not convinced that any of the right fixings have been used to assemble this thing uh, someone's used a 200 bloody foot pound impact gun I think to put it all together and you can see none of these lock tabs were over the lock tab for the wheel nut sorry the hub nut wasn't over it's used um, shit happens it's not a disaster we can fix this we can fix this so that is going to be makes absolutely no difference but that's going to be near side um, and then I'll strip this side down um, right down to the swivel ball I think we'll see what's going on this is where the nightmare comes in of kind of half done projects you never know um, and this is this is not having a grumble because I knew that this car was half done but if you ever pick up a half done project folks yeah that's how tight that was that's what, that one that one's tight not tight tight not tight well he's done half the bolts up <clears throat> so yeah this it's, it's the justification really for taking the whole thing apart again um, so I'm rather hoping the customer didn't have to pay to have it put together the last time round uh, but it is just a warning out there folks uh, that picking up half done projects it's not just a case of putting it back together again you have to go around and check every single bolt I'm afraid this is the um, CB joint from the uh, from the front left hand side of the car. Now, I always have a quick look at these things uh, just to see what's going on. First and foremost, um, I don't believe it to be an original GKM, so it's been replaced at some point. Um, there's no sign of any hardening around the edges. Uh, I've seen these before, um, and they smack of Chineseium, unfortunately. And have you ever seen a ball like that? Can you see that? Can you see how pitted and corroded that is? And this thing was packed with grease as well. Look at it. Uh, and the track inside that the ball runs around is in a similar condition. So you can see this ball here, look. Look at the pitting on it and that one down there. It's fucked. So that's rubbish. No point putting that back in at all. I can go encase that in, uh, in concrete, I think. It's about all it's good for. Uh, it did feel a bit on the loose side, but the notches in it are just unbelievable. This is going to click and clatter like I don't know what. So yeah, point is that. Um, so I really completely stripped down the passenger side and can't go anywhere with it now because I need CV joints, I need gaskets and so forth. I have got, I wasn't planning on taking the swivel ball off, but 
I'm glad I did because all the bolts on that were loose as well. Um, conversation with customer, I think. It's all been cleaned out. Look. So it has all been cleaned out. ECU shouldn't be there. ECU can go up there. It's all been cleaned out. It looks like it's got new swivel pins and new swivel pin bearings in there. Um, so I think once it's all together, I will check the preload and we'll take it from there. Battling now with the, uh, the right hand side. Can you see the top bolt here on the caliper? Yeah, um, I'm struggling to get that off. I'm going to have to get a little bit of heat, I think, into the the mounting and see if I can get any way to get that to uh, to shift. Because at the moment, that's a mile away. You see, no, <coughs> the retaining plate here is actually broken. Um, so I don't know what's. So there's a seize fixing in there. <coughs> yeah, this side's in a more challenged condition than the other side. Now, the other thing that's interesting here, I've got the scuffing on the disc here. So I've done nothing with this caliper, scuffing on the disc, and also the gouge on this inner face here, because the disc is actually in contact with the caliper. I don't know what the fuck is going on here, but look at the gap down here. On one side, it's like a millimetre, on the other side, it's about three millimetres. There's something wrong here. Badly wrong. Um, and washers underneath the bolt heads doesn't help either. I took the pads out, by the way. The pads I took out. Um, oh, fuck's sake. Oh, what a fucking balls ache that was. Um, so I got it um, basically heated the carrier up here, and I can't go near it at the moment because it's like been uh, heated up. Heated it right up while I belted a, a smaller socket over the top of the head. I basically tapped, this is kind of, got the socket on there so you bang in the socket as you're heating it and then got the impact wrench and it came straight out but again why the fuck do you put these dry washers on there if the bolt's too long i don't know if that socket's actually going to come off there i'll show you the state of the uh, it might come off might not Wait, wait, wait for it to cool down a little bit. <laughs> well, it might come off. I really did bang this uh, 12 pointed onto it. That's what I was dealing with. Not very helpful, hey. And these things, I mean, there, there is a use for a 12 point socket and sometimes it is just that you can bash it over the top of a bolt that is refusing to release its grip um, and is a six point bolt. Now these bolts here, they don't look anything like the standard um, brake bolts. So I really don't know what the fuck they are. The shank on it is far too long. Which is probably why washers have been used on it. Um, yes, I think we're just going to end up having to get new bolts and stuff throughout. But now I've got the caliper off, I can strip the rest of this hub down. Yeah, a bit of condensation's got in there, isn't it? No lube in this thing whatsoever. Um, and to my mind, these bearings and the nuts look far too far out so maybe that's the reason the bearings haven't been installed properly which is why the disc is not central inside the caliper and why the disc indeed is touching the caliper so again you can see someone's made an effort at least to roll the tabs over on this thing um, but let me get it stripped down uh, this is the uh, driver's side right hand uh, cb joint um, it's it's fared better. It looks to be exactly the same manufacturer as the other one, uh, but looking inside it, I mean, aside from all the rust, you can see there's a big track. I can feel it with my finger. Track where the ball's worn in there. So they're fucked. Both CB joints. That's fine. Get a new pair. 
Um, as far as the swivel and the hub is concerned, I love it when I find things like this. Just what is the fucking point? Someone has absolutely and utterly mangled and mashed that bearing some. So it's going to need a new set of uh, bearings in the swivel ball. Uh, there was no preload set on it. Two bolts uh, are seized in there. Um, the swivel ball itself serviceable. Yeah, I think that's serviceable. Again, it's all been cleaned out, but it's just in really shit condition. Oh, look. I'll just drop one of the bearings, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to replace the pair of them anyway. So I think CV, swivels, uh, pins, bearings, you name it, it's going in. Oh no, there's the bearing there. Um, yeah, it's all, it's all a shambles, really. Uh, but it won't be soon. Now, the stub axle, I was just going to have a quick look at this to see what sort of state this is in. Um, First and foremost, because this thing has been assembled dry a very, very, very long time ago, there's, like, everything's got a surface coating of rust on the inside of it. Now there was oil in the diff. Um, I'm wondering what the diff is going to be like. Again, conversation with the customer. Um, that's all okay. What I was going to do here was look at this, really. I want to see whether that's painful corrosion because it, it depends on what it is as to whether I need to replace the stub axle or not. Because it's not I, I think they are available. I'll just go double check. To my mind it looks like paint. Let's get a copper wire brush. <coughs> might be the twin lipped cortico seal does go on. Let's get rid of these two. We don't need those two. They're rubbish. Um, So you normally get your back so you can at least see the wood for the trees. Right, let's get a copper disc. Hello, Mr. Drill. Taken up. Where are you, Mr. Drill? That's what I was meaning about that bearing. That's the top swivel pin bearing to the right hand side. That's had some uh, percussion, isn't it? Um, right, small copper zip wheel. It might survive. Steel wool on at the minute. Yeah, huge, great area of corrosion there. Look at that. That's fucked. Uh, the problem with that is that you could put a seal on there, and it's, as soon as the wheel starts turning, it's going to tear the seal. So that's scrap. Um, where's the other one? Two swivel boards both appear to be quite, quite good. Order. Um, both swivel balls appear to be in quite good order. Old sweep seal. Crap. Seems a lot worse. The 
chrome's not pitted. So, because of that, I mean, there is some damage around and about it there. You can see someone's been belting it with a hammer or something. I think that's outside the sweep area. Yeah, that can go back on. I'll just replace the, um, <coughs> the bearing caps, or the bearings. That's easy enough. So CV joints, one stub axle. Other stub axle is here. Now that, to my mind, is paint. <laughs> If you've ever painted a face that a seal oh, oh, goes on to, please don't. How the fuck is a seal supposed to? This one looks new underneath all this shit. This one does look new. That looks new. I should go over that with some very fine wet and dry once that's been cleaned off properly. But this one, um, enormous corrosion. This one is cleaned up very nicely. So I'm going to go over this with some wet and dry, very, very fine wet and dry. Polish it back up so it's not going to tear the seal oh, 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 when it goes back on. And then that can go back on the car. So we need one stub axle. <coughs> and all the cabins. It's funny how one of these CV joints has gone in absolutely bone dry and the other one's gone in absolutely lubed up to fuck but the one that's lubed up to fuck is the one with the pitted balls on it and it's so loose you can actually just push it apart this whole thing I can just disassemble and ne never this loose never seen one yet that's this loose shite never mind never mind well that was fun but I've done it now so uh, the two studs that were seized in there this one came out Okay, no problems at all. I've just got a bit of heat around here. Gripped hold of it with the mole wrench and it started to turn. This one I had to drill out. But I managed to drill it right down the middle and then tap it out. I've chased all these threads through. Um, I think I found out what the problem was with the brake caliper bolts on the driver's side. They'd used the bolts with the huge sleeve which go through the uh, swivel pin at the top. It's not very good. Never mind. So, because of that, I think the... Uh, thing wasn't securing itself. Let me just put my camera here. Right, now, this is something else that I don't really like to see, and this is the mating face in between <coughs> the disc and the hub, and someone's painted it. Um, now, it really is not great, that paint. This is, this is, I don't know, a couple of thou thick, but unless you can guarantee that this paint is absolutely you know, smooth, and in fact, it's, there's no paint on this side at all. That's um, it's it's not going to help your disc or your wheel to rotate centrally. Now, you might say, well, you know, it's not going to make that much of a difference a couple of thou, but you know, why bother? Why bother balancing your wheels, etc., etc., etc. So I'll take all this crap off. I'm going to knock the um, wheel bearings out as well. I'm going to replace those because I'm going to do the CV joints. I might as well do the bearings, uh, the swivel bearings, uh, swivel seal. Oh, oh, oh. And then we're all done. Look at all this paint. It's lovely, isn't it? Why? Never mind. I suspect it's been rattle canned rather than put on with a six-inch brush. But uh, even so, just don't. You're going to paint shit like this. Um, then I would suggest you go for the British Army approach, which is fully assemble and then paint it, if you must. But uh, now this is, I don't, I, I don't know when this was done, in, in fairness. I mean, certainly there's nothing the customer would have done. But uh, when I take these things apart, and I, I, bearing in mind how many bodges I've found on this thing so far, with loose bolts and so forth, I thought, well, I'd better just double check the torque of the disc bolts and I thought well while I've got it this far apart I might as well just take the disc off um, and uh, see what's going on and of course then we find this lovely 
So I always try and make sure this face is as clean as it possibly can be when you're putting discs on. Because then you stand a fair chance of the hub and the disc being properly aligned. And not wibbling around. So I reckon this disc, if I'd have checked it, with the wheel bearing done up properly, which it wasn't, but with the wheel bearing done up properly, I would have probably found that there would have been some run out on the disc. And then you're blaming the uh, disc for it, whereas actually it's the crap of this mating face. There you go. Right, I'm going to get on with that. Get all this shit off here. It's quite a tough paint, I'll give it that. And then I'll go over it with a zip wheel just to make sure I've got it all off. Take the seal out and the bearing seat can come out as well. I might as well do all that before I put the disc back on. And I can put new bearings in. I'm sure there's people out there that paint bloody head gasket faces. I certainly know people that have painted the inside. Well, I don't know the people, but I know people that have painted inside engines. <coughs> and that I just do not understand. Paint there is actually quite thick. I mean, you can. Let me think on that. You can actually see. Oh, there's a few few thou, and that's just going to give me run out. And obviously, because we're right at the hub, but the outer edge of the disc, the run out's going to be exaggerated. So yeah, don't do this, folks. I know you think you're doing the right thing. Just don't. You're just creating pain for yourselves. And just finished up with a bit of a paper just to make sure that I have got a completely clean surface there's nothing obvious on it can't feel anything with my finger oh what's that there now it's just a mark right a mark or a pull right now let's get this um, seal out this can go out of the way for a second I cleaned up the um, threads, by the way, on the uh, on the studs. Um, bearing in mind the problems I had getting the nuts off, and all of the nuts. Where are they? I throw them in an ear in disgust. They're kind of like really showing signs of fatigue, but now they go on quite neatly but then they get tight as you get further on they get tighter so I'm inclined to just forget the nuts we'll put a new set on or another set on when well, I got these two came off this car what are these ones over there well that goes on beautifully didn't it so that's just ridiculous I don't know what the nuts were that went on it I'm not convinced correct anyway um, seal sometimes these come out sometimes they don't I should get myself a seal hook shouldn't I it's broken the seal Starting to move. Starting to move. And that should come out now. Because all I'm doing is I'm wiggling it back up and down, you see. Pushing it down on one side, lifting it up on the other. Right, 
have to get a uh, claw hammer onto that. Have I got a claw hammer? I have somewhere. I can find it. Nope. to fucking come out, isn't it? It's out. Right. That's the seal. Quite a big chunky fucker, that one. Inner bearing. And these are... They're anything like the other bearings. Yeah, there's a lot of surface corrosion on that, so I'm not going to bother going anywhere, but it's an original Timken bearing. You see the corrosion on the inside face, on the back face, etc., etc., etc. So forget bearings. They can all go and be replaced. Go in the scrap bin. Knock these two fellas out. Clean it. I'm going to keep that seal there though, because I need to just um, That can go for clean, um, and then I can rebuild that. Right, let's put that in the cleaning pile. Mm -hmm.